Welcome back to the seventh part of our Plotly crash course. If you want to see what we did earlier in the notebook, make sure to check the description for the other parts. You'll also find a link for the Jupyter notebook that we're working on. So we're in the process of updating our bar chart by changing its layout after creating the figure. We're going to kick things off in this video by updating the bar chart that we've been working on. If we want to change the type of the bar chart, we can change it by updating the layout. And we can do that by update layout bar mode equals, I think it's stack. So that changes the way that the bar chart is represented. And uh, this is a pro tip so to speak if you make just a uh, if you just put something here it will give you an error and in the end you can see what options you have available so let's change it to stack just to make it different another way that you can change the um, the template declare it like this and let's change it to seaborn and well that makes it much nicer or plotly dark that's not as nice so let's keep seaborn and why don't we i don't like the height let's keep let's keep the height at 200 that's not good how about 400 that's better okay and in case we don't want that so you see you can you can easily customize it and you can test different things by commenting i'm on windows so this is uh, control slash so you can comment and, and test what works better. Um, I think that's a nice way to experiment and I strongly encourage you to do the same. I showed you a few different ways that you can update uh, simple things. And now we're going to create a chart that has a lot of attributes inside and we need to update a lot of things in there. We're going to do a country comparison and I'm going to have two countries. United States and Japan and what else so let's let's do this uh, and we're gonna build the figure together so we're gonna do fig go dot figure ah go figure <laughs> that's funny um, I just realized that <laughs> anyways um, so fig go figure we have an object to add some traces so let's add some traces fig add trace and again I'm gonna keep everything tidy and clean so I'm gonna do like this in other uh, courses that you see uh, People might just put everything in one line and the code is very hard to read, especially if you um, revisit the code later. It's, it's much nicer if you just keep everything, even though it's longer and you end up with really long cells, it's just easier to read. So the first trace we're going to add is a scatter, scatter plot. And again, new line. And so our X is going to be DF, DF, uh, DF country one. So we're going to have the data for the, for United States and the X is going to be a year and Y is going to be life exp. And the name, 
we're going to use the same variable. So we're going to use country one. Okay. This trace is done. Let's do another one. And the nice thing about graph object, you don't have to type everything. You can just reuse the code that you added before. So instead of one, I'm going to have two and the same here and the same here. Let's see what happens. Okay. So by default, we have a line with some markers and it's again, nothing fancy, but we're just starting. Let's add some, some custom things. There is a huge amount of parameters you can tweak and that's exactly what we will keep doing in the last part of the course. If you feel like you learned something new in the previous lessons, if you enjoy the content, let's make it official and please subscribe to the channel. It's that simple. Thank you for all the comments. I do read them and try to answer them all. I'm not always successful, but if you do have any questions, just leave them below and I'll do my best to reply to them as soon as possible. So I'll see you in part eight of our crash course.